Welcome to episode 14 of Escape the Rat Race Radio. I'm your host, Christian Rodwell, and this is your ticket to escape the nine to five. So you have to think about that as well if you're an affiliate. Like, what are you going to do as the affiliate that gives people a reason to come to you, that gives people a reason to pay attention to you versus paying attention to the original vendor's website or paying attention to hundreds or maybe thousands of other affiliates who are trying to do the same? If all you want is to relax on the beach, right? If you're just like, I just, I just wanna, I just wanna not have to work, and I just wanna relax, and so I'm gonna do an online business thing to help me do that. That's not gonna work. That is simply not gonna work. Greetings, go-getters! I hope you're having a wonderful week. I'm just about recovered from completing the London Marathon last weekend. What an amazing experience that was, although very, very painful by the time I crossed the finish line. Anyway, that's one of my life goals ticked off the list. So this week, I've invited another wonderful guest to Escape the Rat Race Radio, Shane Millor. Now, Shane is the founder of Thrive Themes, and Shane's half Irish entrepreneur who lives in Switzerland. And if you're into internet marketing, then you may be familiar with Shane. He has been an incredible success over the last few years with creating his Thrive Themes. And Shane's entrepreneurial journey started back in 2006 when he dropped out of university. And you'll hear throughout this interview how Shane actually found it pretty hard to get into the rat race in the first place. So he was kind of forced into working out what he wanted to do and what his interests were from an early stage. And Shane went from offline business in the hardware market to e-commerce to affiliate niche sites and from hungry and desperate to actually well-fed and successful. And today Shane creates and sells software and information products for a living And he's been lucky enough to sell thousands of copies of his products and build up a business from absolute scratch to seven figures and beyond. Now, Shane's hard work has earned him a solid reputation amongst internet marketers across the world. And Thrive Themes is a brand under which Shane creates conversion-focused WordPress themes and plugins to help aspiring entrepreneurs and business owners build their online presence and increase their online sales. So today's episode is really for all of you who are either already with a website wondering how can you improve your conversions? How can you get more people subscribing? How can you sell more products? And also for those of you who haven't quite yet get something live and online because Shane's sharing so much of his knowledge today that there'll be loads and loads of tips which you can implement to make sure you're doing things in the right way. So let's not waste any time and let's head over to our interview today with Shane Millar. Okay, so welcome Shane to Escape the Rat Race Radio. Brilliant to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah. Great. And where are you in the world today, Shane? Uh, Right now I'm in Switzerland. Would you care to give our listeners a background there? So I grew up in Switzerland, but I have parents of Irish heritage on the one side and Italian heritage on the other side. So quite a mixed bag there. Even though I grew up in Switzerland, I spoke uh, English with my father and I have a very mild accent compared to my my Irish uh, relatives, unfortunately, because I quite like the sound of, you know, proper (laughs) Irish accent. (laughs) And we're recording this uh, interview a few days after St. Patrick's Day. So were there some celebrations over in Switzerland? Actually, I have no idea. So we've never we've never um, celebrated St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I guess it's kind of it's kind of everywhere now, right? There's you can see I don't know bars do it everywhere with the green beer and whatnot. But I've never been part of that now. We're moving, you know. Nice link is obviously the the Thrive uh, themes. You know, the wonderful resplendent in green and Thrive is one of my absolute favorite online tools for quickly putting together landing pages and obviously its ability to really help people's websites convert more of their visitors into subscribers and paying customers. And for anyone who hasn't yet had the privilege of of actually seeing Thrive in action and and being able to use that, would you mind just giving our listeners a a little bit of brief uh, background as, as to what Thrive is? Thrive Themes, we basically create conversion-focused WordPress themes and plugins. And we started the company simply because I've always been a WordPress user, 
and I made a lot of websites for a lot of different businesses. And I was always frustrated because most of the tools I could find and most of the themes and things I could find were always basically design focused and feature focused, right? So it's like, oh, we have, you know, you get a plug in with a 3D parallax slider thing because that's a new you know, it's a new bit of web tech that someone put in a plugin. But uh, and then obviously in themes and things, it's always like, well, it always follows the latest design trends. It's always about design, design, design. And for me, that was frustrating because what I really need is I need a conversion focus. I, I want to build a website. I basically don't care about having it look super fancy or have, you know following the latest web trends or whatever. I care about will it convert visitors into customers. And very very often, the way to convert visitors into customers is not to make it super fancy or follow design trends right it's conversion design is is very different from let's say fancy design and so that was something that frustrated me and so we started building tools for people like ourselves who you know want to build a business based on wordpress and who care about conversions and so we have uh, for example like you mentioned a plugin for building landing pages where the idea is that you can just as quickly as possible create a landing page and you know the template you load is already has all, all the conversion elements already in place so it's it's very easy you don't have to kind of invent it from scratch right mm. we also have a plugin called thrive leads which is a list building plugin which gives you a whole bunch of features and templates that again are just focused on the highest possible converting list building so opt-in forms and things like that throughout your website and many other tools like that but what they all have in common is we basically look at how can we solve actual business problems and how can we help you get higher conversions on your website through our technology absolutely and, and how long has it been since you launched thrive themes now shane it's about three years now and I can see the growth of Thrive and all of the new products and you're continually improving and updating what you already have as well, which is what I really love about Thrive. And everything always looks so crisp and so beautifully designed. Was that something from the beginning that was important to you or has it been something that's evolved throughout the journey? It was important to us from the beginning, but it's something that we, you know, we're getting better at. So and we're st we still are. I mean, it's very important to us that obviously, like you say, I mean, even though I say that, you know, the conversion focus is the, is the primary focus. But of course, we also want our stuff to be nicely designed, to be well designed within that a focus on conversions. So basically, if you, if you think about, you know, a landing page, if once you have all the conversion elements in the right place, you have like the correct visual hierarchy and all this kind of stuff, then within that framework, of course, you want to have it as well designed as possible. We also want to make sure that our tools are as usable as possible, as user friendly as possible. But that's something that has been a focus from day one. But it's something that I think in, you know, in the very beginning, we didn't do particularly well and we've gotten better and better at it and we're going to continue getting better at it if we just take it back to bare basics here just for anyone who is maybe quite new to the whole online world so wordpress now would i be right in saying that probably a third of the websites that we see online are, are probably wordpress based it's something like that yeah i don't know the exact numbers but i i, I know that the last i heard about it was more than a year ago and it was something like 25 percent so it, it might be up to a third now and obviously one of the huge reasons why wordpress became so popular was the amount of plugins that third-party developers could create and which would be very easy to integrate into the existing website this is exactly what you've done here with thrive you've got the thrive content builder and landing pages which obviously give fantastic landing pages and Again, if we just keep it real simple for those that maybe don't fully understand the terminology, what we're talking about with conversions and landing pages is essentially getting someone's email address and name. Yeah, or getting them to make a purchase. So, I mean, a conversion is basically whatever you want visitors on your website to do, right? And so most websites have more than one conversion goal. So typically, as an example, could be that you have a conversion goal, okay, you want to turn visitors into email subscribers so you can start following up with them, you can turn them into return visitors and so on. So there the conversion goal would be get their email address or maybe get their name and email address, maybe get their name, email address and phone number, right, depending on your business. And then a later stage conversion goal would be, well, get them to make a purchase, right? So that could also be e-commerce, something like that, right? You sell something online, you want people to make that purchase. That's the conversion goal. And a later stage conversion goal could maybe be you want them to sign up for 
a membership you want to sign up for like a recurring subscription or something like that it depends on on your business goals but those are generally like the important conversion goals right because of course you can also say well my conversion goal is that you know someone tweets my post or that someone clicks through to my blog post or something like that but those things are kind of trivial basically right that's they're often also called vanity metrics if you look at you know you look at your analytics and you go oh we have more visitors today than yesterday or we got got more social shares like well really who cares like it's not going to pay the bills right so what we try to focus on are the conversion goals that actually drive a business such as lead generation email leads purchases membership signups and things like that and one of the things that i really love as well is that you constantly updating the thrive themes blog with some really really excellent articles that are showing people how to build their business how to optimize their business and clearly over the last three years or so with Thrive, you've learned a huge amount. This area is obviously constantly evolving with new technologies and, and softwares that, that are happening. So I'd be really interested to kind of know how far back this all goes with you, Shane. And um, have you always had an internet marketing background? And was there a point when you yourself were working in a nine to five job and, and you said, enough's enough, I don't want to do this anymore. I want a bit more control over my life. Where did that all begin? I did have a nine to five job maybe once in my life or so, because actually my problem was a different one is I couldn't get a bloody nine to five job, right? (laughs) Originally, you know, after what would be the equivalent to high school, I think, or whatever you do before university, that's, that's what I did. And I was really, really fed up with school at that point. I thought that instead of just going straight back into school, basically, instead of going straight to university, I wanted to do some work, put aside some money maybe travel a bit or something like that, right? Because I also didn't didn't really know what I wanted to do next. But my, my plan fell apart right away because I couldn't get a job. I, I just couldn't find a job. Nobody would hire me. And so all I did was like really, really terrible part-time jobs, temp jobs, sometimes for as little as one day at a time, I'd go somewhere and you know, do some bit of work and get paid a little bit. And then I'd have no work again for two or three weeks or something before the next thing came along. And so that whole plan just didn't work at all. Very briefly for maybe half a year or so, I think I had an actual nine to five job, which also wasn't doing great there. I certainly don't come from the rat race in that sense, right? I never got into the rat race properly, except I guess school, actually school is part of the rat race, right? And I was, I was really fed up with that. I then also attempted to study. I started studying psychology, which was very interesting. And I'm still very interested in that as a topic. But the main thing I learned was that I just did not want to be in school anymore. And so I dropped out. I guess I'd kind of run out of options, right? I was like, okay, I'm apparently I'm unemployable and I don't want to study. So I guess I have to do something for myself. But I also had, I mean, I had a strong drive to create something for myself. I wanted to create something for myself. But I was also utterly unqualified to do so. I just wanted to, yeah, I wanted to start my own business, but I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And for quite a long time, I was kind of trying out different things and just not getting anywhere. It actually took me quite a while and and quite a lot of failed attempts before I even got to the point where I started selling something online. And, you know, Thrive Themes is is not my first business. And I think that's very important to know because... Most people who know me will know me because of Thrive Themes. And if you look at Thrive Themes, then yeah, we just kind of burst onto the scene, you know, three years ago. Now we're, it's already a highly profitable company. We're growing very quickly. So this makes the kind of impression of, you know, the overnight success, right? We just, from day one, we hit the ground running. What you don't see is that before that, I had already poured about six years or so of my life into into learning about entrepreneurship, about how to start a business and how to how to make all this stuff work, how to sell things. That's the main problem. Um, I have a very strong marketing focus, right? I come from the marketing side. So much more than the ideas guy or, or something like that, I'm the marketing guy. I think of things in terms of how do you sell something? What is marketable, right? What do people want? How do you find out what people want? How do you describe what you have in such a way that makes people want to buy it and so on? And that took years for me to develop, you know, to the point where I could start Thrive Themes. Very valid point there and and one that's echoed by many of our guests that there is no such thing as an overnight success, that there's so much hard work that goes in beforehand and, and you've said such the same as well. 
the marketing psychology, that's I'm interested about that, Shane, because Thrive obviously takes care of the technical, um, allows you to create the page and everything is in place that needs to be in place to collect the data. But it's the psychology which is almost more important or certainly as important. Maybe you could touch a little bit on some of the, the lessons learned or, or some strategies that if someone's got pages up or they've got their website at the moment and they're just not really getting the opt-ins that they're looking for. Now, I know there could be a number of reasons there, but often it's probably things like the headline and the message. Any things that you would share with listeners around that? Okay, one of the most important things to understand is if you want to be really good at creating desirable products and if, if you want to be good at marketing, then to some degree, you have to like get over your ego because an important thing to realize is that your idea or your ideas about things don't matter. You know, your idea of what makes a good product or not, or what you think people should want or what you think should resonate, not, none of that matters. Basically, what you think doesn't matter. And what you have to become really good at is seeing your stuff through someone else's eyes. The reason I mention ego is, first of all, because we get attached to our own ideas, right? It's like, oh, I came up with this great idea and now people should should bloody well appreciate this and, and sign up for my thing, right? Yeah, you kind of have to get over yourself a little bit to just say, actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether I think this idea is good or not. But also the reason I mention ego is that what I see very commonly as a beginner mistake is that people are really, really intent on designing various aspects of their own website. So at first you might think, well, of course, what was the problem with that? Well, the problem is that is that you're not a designer, okay? If you're the entrepreneur, if you're the, the guy starting the business or the girl starting the business, you're probably not a designer. And so first of all, you shouldn't be spending your time doing design work. And this is one of the things that templates are for, right? Because probably you can't, in the beginning, you probably shouldn't you know, pay a designer. It's quite expensive to pay a designer to do custom designs. But that's, that's why templates are so great, right? You just take the template and it's mm -hmm. already designed. But what a lot of people have this very strong impulse to to customize, like to to change everything about the template because they go, oh, but I want my color here and I want a different font and I want a different thing, different layout, different picture, a different everything. And in the end, you've spent a lot of time making the design worse because you're not a designer, right? So you made the design a lot worse. And why are you doing that? Well, it's because you're attached. Again, it's basically you're attached to your own idea. You have an idea of what you think the website should look like. And you don't have like the humility to be able to look at the website as if it wasn't your brand and if it, you, know, you didn't care about it because your visitors come to your website and they just say, this doesn't look good. I don't trust this business, right? Because they don't have your attachment. They don't have your history. They don't think it has to be exactly this shade of red. Otherwise, it's a deal breaker or whatever, right? I think that's one of the typical mistakes that entrepreneurs make at the beginning is that they're too caught up in their own ideas and what they want and what they think is important. Then they forget about what does my audience care about? What does my audience think is important, right? I think that's one of the most important skills that you that to some degree you can develop is, you know, see your stuff as if you'd never seen it before. So can you write a headline and then basically step away and come back and read that headline as if you had no idea what this website is about and as if you'd never seen this before? That's an extremely important skill to develop. And you can develop this as a skill to some degree, but to a large degree, this is simply a question of remaining ever vigilant right you just always have to remind yourself of this because i am as susceptible to this problem as you are and i've been practicing this for years but it happens to me as well i will write a blog post or something there will be some glaringly obvious oversight in there that often someone else has to catch right they'll catch me out and say listen the way you start writing about this blog post you know the way the way you start writing about this you're assuming that your reader knows what you know but they don't. So you have to explain mm. that first, right? And so even to me, that still happens. <laughs> and you really have to stay alert to this and always remind yourself, hold on, you know, I've just made a homepage. Now, what does this look like to someone who's never seen this before, who doesn't know me, doesn't know my business, doesn't know what I do, doesn't know why they should care? What does this look like seen through someone else's eyes? So you would always recommend to try and get a second opinion from someone else as well, rather than just spending ages, as you say, kind of brain dumping everything that's in your mind and then just putting it out there and then hoping that it's going to work. Getting a second opinion can be really good, but you have to be careful about who you get the second opinion from, right? Because if it's someone who 
you have to get the second opinion from someone who's not afraid of being an asshole to you, right? <laughs> it has to be someone who's not afraid to say, oh, you just, you just spent five hours making this website. Well, this website <laughs> looks terrible. I hate it. You have to find that guy or, you know, that friend who can tell you that to your face. Because it's no use if you just, because most people would basically be polite and say, you know, great, wow, you made this website amazing. I couldn't do that. You have to find someone who can be brutal with you. I know that you also say, Shane, that there's three things that online business needs to thrive. First one being a good offer, second one being traffic, and the third one a website that converts. So we've just touched a little bit on there or on the conversion side of things. Let's look at the first step there, the good offer. So either assume that someone has their products, it's it's kind of proven, it's already making sales and, and they're happy with that. But what about someone who is at an early stage and they don't even have their own product yet. Would you advise using affiliate sites such as JVZoo or ClickBank or, or maybe some others that you can recommend just to get some practice? So to take a product that's already been tested, it's selling, they can give you some marketing materials and then they can jump on Thrive and just actually start putting it together and practicing the marketing. To some degree, yes. But you have to also understand that if you're promoting something as an affiliate, it's not the same as selling it. Affiliate marketing doesn't work by taking a product and kind of making your own sales page for it and then hoping that people buy through your page instead of the you know the original product page. It's probably not going to happen. You also have to understand the difference there. But yes, it can be. So in, in order to kind of cut your teeth on marketing basics, affiliate marketing can be useful. And certainly I'm going to be an advocate of that because that's what I did, right? I started out as an affiliate and it can be useful. What you have to understand here, and again, I'm saying this because I've seen this mistake kind of made in, in many cases, is that there's something about being an affiliate that is utterly the same as you know making your own business or making your own product, which is that you have to bring some kind of a unique value to the table. And that's something that the affiliate product cannot do for you. So as you say, as an affiliate, you can pick a product that has already proven itself in the market, that, that is already selling where all the fundamentals are in place. But you can't then just make your own version of the sales page and put that on a landing page and hope that people will buy. That's just basically not going to happen. You have to bring unique value to the market in order to be a good affiliate. So that product you're promoting is presumably already doing that, right? That product is basically saying, here's whatever, right? We have some features, we bring some value that others are not bringing, that differentiates us from others. And that's why you end up buying that product, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as an affiliate, you have to do the same thing. You have to somehow give people the reason, why should they come to your website? Why should they read your review or whatever it is of that product? And why should they buy it through your link? And you have to bring some value because a huge mistake that a lot of affiliates make is that they do, for example, just the super generic affiliate product review where you just write a review that is totally replaceable, that doesn't really inform you. Often what I see, and I see some of our affiliates do this as well, right? We used to have an affiliate program. We don't anymore, but we used to have an affiliate program. And I saw this a lot with our affiliates where they would write reviews like we'd see you know 10 new reviews come in when we release a new product and you could barely tell these reviews apart because everyone basically just says oh here's a new product by thrive themes it has these features it does this and that here are some screenshots of the user interface we think it's great here's our button you know here's our link buy it they've not brought any unique value to the to the world basically right because they they haven't told you anything that you couldn't learn by just coming to the sales page and, and reading the features and and watching the video where you can see the features of the product and you can see what it looks like on our website. You don't have to go to that affiliate, right? And so yeah. an example, an example of some of our best affiliates make a lot of money by doing tutorials, by basically saying, you know, here's how we did this campaign that got a ton of traffic using one of the Thrive tools. And they put together a tutorial. Okay, step one, we did this. Step two, we used Thrive Content Builder to make this page. Step three, we did this. And that is unique value, right? Only this affiliate has created this post describing these steps on how to get a certain result that people want. And incidentally, one of the steps is, oh, you use Thrive Content Builder. If you don't have it yet, click here to get it. So that affiliate is bringing a unique value to the world and that helps them get people's attention. That basically helps them earn, actually earn those commissions they earn, right? So you have to think about that as well if you're an affiliate. Like, what are you going to do as the affiliate that gives people a reason to come to you, that gives people a reason to pay attention to you 
versus paying attention to the original vendor's website or paying attention to hundreds or maybe thousands of other affiliates who are trying to do the same. That's very valid indeed. I guess that that does lead into then when you've created that additional content or that increased value, how do you go about finding the traffic? And I know this is, uh, I could, we could talk probably for days about different traffic strategies. Would there be any suggestions that you would say are maybe the easier options at the moment because traffic generation could be paid advertising such as Facebook or Google. It could be writing blog articles and creating content and distributing that. It could be utilizing social media. People, I think, get so overwhelmed. What would be your advice for someone there, Shane? I mean, right away, you know, obviously paid traffic can be extremely valuable, it can be a great channel, but you need you need some money to get to grips with that. So, you know, whether it's Facebook ads or something else you'll probably lose your first few thousand dollars right on that for most people starting out that's not an option they don't have the budget to put into that so i wouldn't i wouldn't start there then the content marketing kind of thing was oh let's write some blog posts and and hope to get like social shares and organic traffic and stuff that can work but i think people vastly underestimate the amount of time that takes so you can definitely just slowly build up authority basically by just putting out good content good content good content building an audience like that but you have to do that consistently and i wouldn't expect there to be a lot of traction in the first six to 18 months of doing that especially if you want to get search traffic it's just going to take a while it's just going to take a good while before the ball gets rolling there and i think most people just quit long before they get to a point of, of positive returns on that. So it's certainly not a case of I'm just going to write two or three blog posts and that's how I'm going to get all my traffic, right? That's, that's simply not going to work. What I recommend is that you try and go for a small number of really big wins. Instead of kind of publishing a blog post three times a week, right? Publishing three times a week and just keep doing that for like a year until you get some, some decent traffic. You can put more work into, let's say, two blog posts, right? You can make two blog posts and get a significant amount of traffic from that. So one blog post goes on your blog, and you want to make sure that this is a really fantastic piece of content. Right? You want to make sure that this is really unique, well-written, and, and delivers real value about a pressing issue that people in your market have. That's your first blog post. And then a second blog post, equally as fantastic, equally as, it has to be something that makes people go, wow, right? And that second blog post, you pitch that as a guest post to some of the biggest players in your market. So that's the typical thing, right, as a guest post. So you try and get it published on a high traffic website as a guest post. Your fantastic guest post links back to your fantastic own blog post. And from there, you generate leads. That would be a pretty good way, right, to get the ball rolling early on. But similarly, you can you can try and basically get high leverage stuff. So can you maybe do a webinar teaching something to someone who has a huge audience? Or can you provide some free content, like a free course, to someone who has a huge membership site with a lot of members? You want to find people who already have a huge audience and who have a lot of authority in your market and figure out, can I bring some value to those people, right? Can I do something for them that is mainly a huge favor for them? You shouldn't think of it in terms of, I'm going to try and dump some content on this guy's blog. It should be, can I pitch a blog post that they really want on their blog, right? Because it's so good. The membership site example, someone has a membership site. It's not just, here's a crappy little course, please publish it to your members. It's like, how can I make the best course in this membership site and give it to them for free? And that's high leverage stuff. I've done similar stuff. And especially when I started out, I did similar things. And that really helped kind of get my name out. And it really helped establish a reputation for myself as someone who creates high quality stuff. I did some of that through other people's audiences. And I think that can be much more effective than kind of this slow, gradual buildup of SEO traffic and social media and so on. We often talk with people who are starting their own business, who are just trying to do everything on their own from a standing start. And it's far, far quicker to tap into other people's flow. So as you talk there, people who've already built a list and have already got traffic flowing, see what you can offer to them that would be valuable to them and, and their customers. And sometimes even co-creation. So bring one of your skills, one of an area that you have knowledge 
and go to them and see if you can co-create something because then they will be much more likely to share that out to their audience as well. So Shane, obviously we've talked about your story and how you arrived at, at creating Thrive and obviously the, the fantastic success since launching three years ago. And would it be fair to say that this has now given you the financial freedom and the ability to really work from anywhere that you choose? Yeah, absolutely. I've actually lost count of the amount of countries I've lived in already. So yeah, it has <laughs> yeah. given me it has given me um, a ridiculous amount of freedom. I mean, I often think about this, you know, that the wealthiest kings of the past didn't have this this level of freedom. It's it's really it's really crazy what uh, the internet and but also the proliferation of it. it's such so easy to travel now, right? It's easy to travel and find accommodation everywhere and stuff like that. It's it's amazing that the amount of freedom that that we can have through having a business of our own. It's it's really it's really something special. And I know it is a dream of so many of our members and listeners is this laptop lifestyle where we have an online business that's just pumping cash whilst we're asleep and we wake up and you know it's all happy and and glorious. Just how realistic is it to let's just say someone right now who has got this this dream of quitting their job and and setting up an online business is that possible or do they really have to build a business and then create the online aspect secondly i think it's a big mistake to think of an online business as something other than a business i don't know anyone who does this i don't know anyone who has successfully created their own business and is living this kind of laptop lifestyle who isn't an exceptionally hard worker. What I can say for sure is that if you're working a nine to five job and you you want this kind of freedom, you have to be willing to pay the price of working harder than you've ever worked in your life and working harder than anyone you've ever known or heard of for many years. Because I'm not saying that that's always necessary. I'm just saying that with considerable consistency, that's part of the story of everyone I know who's successful. Everyone I know who's successful has had a period in their lives, and often that period is many years long, where they just worked like a madman and where really it can be very detrimental to <laughs> it can be detrimental to your health and to your social relationships and everything. The amount of work it takes to get a business off the ground is really it's. I, I remember actually seeing a quote, but I, I can't remember the exact quote anymore. But somewhere I read, you know, someone said, "Well, you have to be a little bit crazy, right? Because it's just an unreasonable undertaking. Starting a business and thinking it's going to be successful is totally unreasonable. So you have to be a little bit crazy. You have to be a little bit obsessed to do that and and to be able to see it through. And I think the the main point I'm trying to make is, if all you want is to relax on a beach, right? If you're just like, I just I just want to I just want to not have to work and I just want to relax. And so I'm going to do an online business thing to help me do that. That's not going to work. That is simply not going to work. Telling it as it is there, which I like, because I think everyone that has been a guest on Escape the Rat Race Radio has emphasized that the hard work is absolutely a necessity. You won't necessarily end up the success won't be what you started out at. And I think your story is a great example of that as well, Shane, that you have to just take that first step and you have to be bold and you have to begin something. Now, we're not saying quit your job and just jump into the unknown, but start something as a side project. So spend your evenings or your weekends and get going. And if you want to create an online business, then obviously Thrive is a fantastic tool that you can use to, to very quickly, like immediately start something. And all of the tools and blog posts as well, I think just going through those would, would give someone enough ideas, wouldn't they, Shane? I think so. I mean, that, like you said earlier, you can't buy technology that will build a business for you, right? And so that's one of the reasons why we also have the blog and we also have Thrive University. So Thrive University is like a learning center that we that we created with a bunch of free courses and things because we also acknowledge that, you know, there's only so much we can do with the software. So the other part of that equation is teaching what we do and how we do it and so on. That's also something that, by the way, is free for everyone. So our blog obviously is free and Thrive University contains many, many courses about things like how to build a mailing list, how to build a, uh, how to create sales pages, how to uh, build an effective sales funnel, and things like that that are that are free for everyone. So people can just sign up for that on our website and get it. But yeah, the, the other thing I wanted to mention is also, you know, like we said, you can't expect this to be an easy ride. And I think work avoidance is not a good 
basis for starting a business, right? Wanting to avoid work. But I also have to say that, you know, not working and like chilling out on a beach is totally overrated. The great thing about entrepreneurship is that you is it gives you the opportunity to do really good work. And doing good work and doing hard work is something you can take pride in. Doing good work and hard work for yourself is in many cases a lot more gratifying than good work for someone else. I mean, it depends on who you work for, obviously, right? Working for a great company and a great cause can be gratifying as well. But I think a lot of people who want to escape the rat race want to escape it because they work a job that doesn't give them satisfaction and they, they might be doing hard work and working overtime and, and so on, but they're doing it for someone else and they're doing it for a business they don't really care for or don't believe in. And that is something where you can say, well, you can replace all that hard work that you're doing now on something you don't care about and do hard work on something you do care about. And that, I think, is a great upgrade to your life quality already. I would agree 100%. I know for you, you really want to make a big difference in the world. So I'll ask you a big question. What would you want your legacy to be? What I've been doing the last years in entrepreneurship is at some point I realized that entrepreneurship is a skill. It's a multifaceted skill, which is an extremely powerful skill. If you are a good entrepreneur, that gives you a huge opportunity to affect change in the world. And so what I have done is I've just taken on projects, entrepreneurial projects of increasing difficulty in order to grow this skill of entrepreneurship. Because what I really want to do is I want to be able to apply this skill to solving greater and greater problems. Because right now, you know, building WordPress tools for people who want to start business, I mean, that's good. We're solving a small problem that a small number of people have. And I would like to continually scale that up and solve bigger and bigger problems. I can't tell you yet what that is. You know, one of the things that, for example, I'm very interested in is climate change. And I would like to do something, you know, maybe some kind of a venture or something that is, is related to uh, controlling and reversing climate change. But I can't tell you yet what that is. What I can tell you right now is that essentially I'm not strong enough to take on such a project yet, right? So, for example, a, a role model of mine in this, in this sense is Elon Musk, right, who after he sold PayPal, uh, took on essentially also great environmental things, right? We said, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna build a car that is more environmentally friendly than other cars, and I'm gonna make that successful so that essentially the more people buy this car, the better that is for the environment. And then he expanded that whole battery thing and so on, which is fantastic. What what I can tell you right now is that my entrepreneurial skill is nowhere near great enough where I could do something on that scale. And so instead of trying to do something on a huge scale and just crashing and burning, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to you know, gradually increase the difficulty of projects I take on until I get to the point where I can do hopefully something like Elon Musk does. That's, you know, I would like to have that as a legacy where, where I manage to create a business that solves a major problem in the world. I wish you the very best of luck with that. And I'm sure that you your quest will be an exciting journey to, to reach that. We're nearly at the end of our conversation today, Shane, and it's been hugely insightful. And I just wondered if since dropping out of university in 2008, it's nearly 10 years now, <laughs> if you could believe that, and you've described the, the many twists and turns along that journey as an entrepreneur. Are there any regrets? I've definitely made mistakes, you know, I've definitely made decisions where I'm looking down and uh, I'm like, I wish I'd done that differently. But no, there are no major regrets. In a recent update on my blog, I, I talked about this, that the last year of my life has been one of the hardest years of my life, just in terms of the level of stress and the amount of hard work and so on. It's been a very challenging journey in many ways. It's been, there's always, there's always way more ahead of me than behind me. But what's important is that I'm I'm where I choose to be, you know, I'm where I want to be. And so in that sense, I, I have no regrets. I mean, I wish I could do better faster. That's, you know, that's really the, the thing that's on my mind. But there's nothing where I go, I don't wish to be doing anything other than what I'm doing. I just wish to be doing more of it. I don't regret dropping out of university. I don't regret the mistakes I made along the way either, because that was my education, right? All the screw ups and all the all the mistakes I made, that was my education. So no, I, I don't really have any regrets. If you had one final piece of advice, Shane, for someone who's listening now and they're maybe on that journey to or from that uninspiring nine to five and being held back by, by the fear of leaving a secure job or a regular paycheck, what would be your, your one piece of advice? I mean, you probably shouldn't leave the job before, before doing 
that shouldn't be the first step, as we mentioned before. But my piece of advice would be that what matters most is what you do every day. It's not one big move that you make at some point in the future where you go, okay, at some point yeah, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to start this thing. No, no, no. What you do every day matters. And, and everything you don't do every day doesn't matter. In other words, consistency is key, which everybody always says consistency is key. But what, what does that mean? I mean, literally stuff that you haven't done every day the last 10 days basically doesn't matter. So if you're not doing things every day in some way that move you towards your goal, then you're not moving towards your goal. It's not going to happen in one big step. It's not going to happen in one dramatic moment like in a Hollywood movie. It's going to happen every single day in small ways. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, there's no reason not to start right now, right? Start making those small moves. Start pushing towards that goal every day. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you today. And I wanted to thank you for everything that you've, you've created with Thrive and all of the value and, and content that you continue to provide to the community. I really, really appreciate that. And if people would like to get in touch with you, find out more about Thrive and the different products available, where, where are the best places for them to, uh, to hunt you down? Yeah, the best place is just thrivethemes.com. Just one word, thrivethemes.com. And from there, you can find our blog, you can find our products and so on. But uh, you'll, you'll find everything from the homepage, basically. Wishing you all the best for the rest of 2017, Shane. And thank you again for being such a great guest on the Skate the Rat Race Radio. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Shane as much as I did. For someone that's been using Thrive Themes for probably the best part of a couple of years now, I know how much it's helped me with my business. And if you are looking to set something up for your own website, I highly recommend that you use Thrive because it's a really low cost option, less than $100 one-off payment. You don't have a monthly subscription to the landing page builder. And that's a great place for you to begin. You don't even need a website. You can just get Thrive and install that into a free WordPress site and you're up and running within minutes. It's really easy to use. And if you want to check out more, then head over to etrr.online forward slash resources, where you'll see all of the free resources that we offer. And it includes books, podcasts, online tools, and you can find Thrive there and you can click and learn more, watch the videos and maybe grab a copy of that and start building your conversion focused landing pages right away and start driving some traffic based on some of the tips and techniques that Shane shared with us there. Now, Shane is a true expert when it comes to digital marketing. So if you want to read the blog, I highly advise that as well. And all the links that were mentioned in this interview can be found in the show notes. So if you're listening now on your phone, tap on the icon, look for the show notes and click away. I appreciate you listening. If you haven't already joined us in the Escape the Rat Race Facebook group, head over to Facebook, search for ETRR or Escape the Rat Race within 12 months and you'll find our private group. Just click to request to join that. And it's a really supportive environment if you're looking to build your business and share some of your ideas and also find people to work with that are going to support you and be positive around. They're the kind of people that are going to help you on your journey. So wish you a wonderful week and I'll catch you again in two weeks time. See ya.